I wanted to share some fun data that we collected in March with our new ground penetrating radar system. It was not that new, but I'm new to using it. And so we went out to an area that's got dolomite and chert and is known for sinkholes. And you can see in this picture here, one of our colleagues, Sue Webb, climbing into one of these holes, which I do not advise. Um, and so, yeah, I just wanted to show you the data. I'm not at all an expert, so I won't be able to, to show you what the different I uh, will tell you what the different anomalies are, and I'm going to seek some help from a friend, but I wanted to share what we've been doing. And so the idea is to just be able to identify these sinkholes to just protect um, people and from future sinkholes from forming. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's about helping local communities. So this picture here is from Google Earth, and this is a quarry that we went to in this limestone area, or this dolomite area, sorry. And so we drove in on the top. Let me get a laser pointer. We drove in and parked up here, and then, oh, we actually drove down into the quarry, and we did um, three lines. So you can see this wiggly north-south line over here. We did it twice. We did it going north to south and south to north. Then we walked up this hill here, and then we did two lines again at the top, um, just in opposite directions to confirm that we got the same data. We'll hopefully be going back soon to do a more decent um, comprehensive survey in the bottom of the quarry. And so, yeah, there's a known fault in this area. I'm actually assuming it goes all the way up here, and that's why usually roads are built along faults because it's easier. Um, and so the, just keep in mind that this fault is in this area. So let's look at line two and line three here. So exactly the same line. And so I've swapped, uh, I'm just trying to see which one did I swap around, line three, so that both of them are north to south. And just as a first pass, you can see both lines look pretty similar. The difference, I think we, we, changed, we played around a bit with the height of the antenna. And... The first thing that comes that I seem to see are these dipping layers here in the middle between 10 and 30 meters along the profile. And so, as I mentioned, there is interbedded chert and dolomite. So I think these are your chert layers dipping down. The question would be what is going on at the beginning here? I don't know if this is maybe the fault that we're seeing here, these dipping layers. We'll go back and um, spend a bit of time seeing what we can see on the ground now that we have these GPR signals. And interesting about this reverse reflector, I'm not sure, and also this region here, I've put a big question mark because you've got quite a few hyperbolas. Are we starting to see caves here? Um, and strong reflectors on the ground here. I'm not sure if we're getting very good signal through. And a big thing to keep in mind, our youth system is not really seeing much, well, it's not really meant to see much below five meters. So I'm not sure if this is actually a proper signal coming through. If we can believe it, I'll ask the experts about that. Um, if anybody in this, uh, sees this video and is a GPR expert, um, I'd love to know your interpretation. Um, I'm quite interested to know about these smaller hyperbolas. And so um, I'm going to, on the next screen, zoom into this image. I just wanted to point out on this Google Earth image here. So here's our north-south line. Here's this fault at the beginning, which I wonder is that doesn't correlate with this region here of dipping sediments. But we know that we climbed up here to see the opening of a cave further to the west of our line. And so the cave is in this region here where we haven't got very good penetration. And we've got this um, hyperbola at like seven meters depth, which is probably too deep. So um, it'll be interesting to go back now because we went along the line here, but we can actually go down now further deep into the quarry and see what can we see on the side walls here. I mean, the sheer fact that there's bush growing here, I wonder if that's not a sign of something um, and if that's not what we're picking up here. But this is all just my, uh, what I'm assuming. Um, I've also put out the velocity that we used to do the conversion was 0 0.15. Okay, so this is a zoom into the line, and what I'm really going to be asking uh, the guys I know who do GPR is, what about these smaller hyperbolas here? Like, this one seems to go far down. What, what does it mean? <laughs> um, even this region here of being so chaotic, so I'll have to do a follow-up video to let you know what I found out about this. We then went up along the road here, and there was quite a bit of topography um, going from down here to up to the top. And so on the next slide, I'll show the, the data corrected for topography. On the left and on the right here, 
um, I've just got two the same image, but with different contrasts. And the contrast, when I increase the contrast, I think this one's probably 100 and this is 10. You can see it, it kind of started to swamp out the shallower layers. But again, I think we're seeing some of the dipping truths here. I don't know if, if at the beginning here, I don't, I don't know, this is a big, if, if this is part of that fault zone where you've got this thickening of sediments here, quite bad um, signal penetration in this region. But what do these hyperbole mean here? I mean, there's also this shallow one on surface. Um, but again, I think now when we go out into the field again, we're going to take big printouts and then walk inside the quarry here and see what we can see looking up. Um, we were trying to correlate, but I'll show you in the next picture. Um, so this is exactly the same line. We were trying to look at where these slump structures were, which is this region uh, over here. I mean, it's not going to be exactly the same because the, the road is a bit wiggly. Um, could we somehow correlate the slumping along the side with what uh, any features that we're seeing in the data? I wonder, because I mean, also you've got this tree here. So I don't know, like I said, we'll have to do a follow-up uh, video of this. And just these smaller signals, can you believe these smaller hyperbola? Uh, but you can see here, this was corrected for topography. So now you've got elevations instead of depths. And then this is the image along the top here, this line six and eight. And I was so excited when I first saw this data, and I was like, we found a huge cave. But then speaking to some colleagues who do GPS, they said, no, well, you can't really say that. And this is hyperbola on the long um, the edge of the cave because of the contrast from rock to air. So it's probably just bad penetration or signal going through here. I wonder about this hyperbola down here. Um, sorry, this is still in time. I see I didn't convert that. But it's about six meters deep, so it is quite deep. Um, you've probably got your dipping chirts again here. I'm not sure if we're seeing anything of shallow depth. So I was just very excited to see the chirts. So clearly, I actually should include the picture here that I took of uh, a succession of uh, chirts and dolomites. Um, and so, yeah, the, I just wanted to quickly go through the processing steps because I actually want to share this with your students of mine. So I didn't write it here, but we've been using this new uh, GPR Pi, which is free software um, through Python. And so uh, I just wanted to share the steps here so he can follow them. And so this is line two and line three, so the exact same line, just in opposite directions. And so you can see here at the start, I actually set our zero uh, to the next one. You can see, okay, sorry, we'll jump back and forth. Is it not gonna let me jump back and forth? Um, slide. No. Oh, I think it's because I'm recording, I can't. Okay, so actually, I'm going to stop this. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording. Oh, the joys of technology. So I removed about 22, um, I'm not sure what the increment was, if it was milliseconds, oh, nanoseconds here on the side. So I removed 22 nanoseconds because it didn't seem like, it seemed like that that was possibly a under the antenna or the plastic of, um, of the box that the antenna's in. And then once I remove that, you then have to remove this mean trace and you put in quite a large value so that it averages it across the whole profile. And I'm so sad I can't show it to you. I really should put them side by side. But you get a lot more detail. So what you're doing by removing this uh, mean trace is you're removing the ground wave and the air wave. And so the image before this is just one strong or two or three strong reflectors going across. And as soon as you remove this mean trace, you can see so much more detail of what is going on in the surface. You can see here, though, I've got a very high contrast of 10,000, which is uh, just too much. Everything's getting swamped. So in the next signal here, I've dropped the contrast down to 10. I've changed it from gray scale to black and white. But there's also a filter you can put through which is T power, and I gave it a value of one. And that T power, what it seems to do is instead of just, um, well, it really highlights the deeper features. So you get a real, um, more of a constant highlighting of all the features going down. And the contrast of 10 also means that your shallower features aren't swamped out. And so you get a lot more detail throughout. So sorry, those processing steps didn't help very much. But that's GPR power. I'll put the link to the software in the, uh, description down below, and there's also some great YouTube videos on how to use the software and what sort of values you should be putting.